Hello, Internet! Today, we're going to learn about protein structure. Proteins have four different levels of structure, and I'm going to show you what those levels are using wire and binder clips. Proteins are made out of amino acids. Amino acids are large molecules with distinct parts. There's the skeleton, made up of a carboxyl group and an amine, that's why they're called amino acids, and then there's the R group. There are 22 kinds of R groups, each with distinct properties. Some are acids, some are bases, some are lipids. It's the particular R group which gives each amino acid its unique properties. For this video, the carbon-nitrogen skeleton is going to be represented by copper wire, and the R groups are going to be represented by these colorful binder clips. I only have four different colors of binder clips, not 22, but for this video, four should be enough. Check out this peptide chain that I made. It represents the primary structure of the protein that we're going to build. Look at this. Here's a black one, then there's three yellow ones, there's a green one, then two more black ones, then another green one, then a red one, then two green ones, a brown one. For this chain, I just put the binder clips on randomly, but normally they would be in a particular order, an order that's determined by the genetic code. All right, that's all there is to primary structure. It's the order of amino acids in the chain. Now, on to secondary structure. The secondary structure of a protein is determined by how its R groups interact with each other. To show how this works, let's invent a rule. Let's pretend that red binder clips can attach to each other like this. So now, remember, here's our primary structure, and I'm just going to attach all of the red pieces together according to our rule. This is the result. It looks like a jumbled mess, but that's because, like I said before, this chain just had a random distribution of different colored binder clips. But what happens if I put the binder clips on the chain in a particular order? Alright, so what I've just done is rearrange the chain to make sure that there's a red piece every fifth piece. See, here's a red one, and then one, two, three, four. Five is another red one. So there's red pieces every fifth piece on this chain. Now watch what happens when I attach all the red pieces together. All right, so now I've attached all the red pieces together and the result is this spiral. You can see it's held together by this backbone of red and then all the other pieces are spiraling around through it and I can actually stick my finger all the way through. I've got a structure with, with defined geometry. This defined geometry is supposed to represent an alpha helix, although I've completely skipped over all of the relevant chemistry. Okay, let's look at another kind of secondary structure interaction. For that, we're going to need to make up another rule. Here's the rule. Yellow pieces can attach to black pieces, but not the other way around. And here's another peptide chain that I made. I designed this one so that there would be a yellow or black piece every fourth position on the chain. And when I attach them together, the result are these hanging sheets. Here's one sheet, here's another sheet. This is supposed to be similar to what's called a beta pleated sheet. So I've completely skipped over the chemistry in those examples, but the main point is this. The primary structure, the linear structure, is determined by the particular order of amino acids in the chain. Those amino acids have specific chemical properties, and when they interact with each other on the chain, it produces the secondary structure. Secondary structures, like alpha helices or beta pleated sheets, arise because the order of peptides allows the chain as a whole to react with itself in a particular way. So far, so good. Now let's move on to tertiary structure. For that, we're going to need another made-up rule. Here's the rule. Let's agree that green pieces can be bound together by a safety pin, like this. This is supposed to represent a disulfide bridge. Now let's return to this chain here. What happens when we attach some of the green pieces together with safety pins? So you can see that I've attached a safety pin here and here and, and several other places. And the result is this tube that my hand fits inside. So it's a global shape for the entire peptide chain. Let's compare secondary and tertiary structure because it's pretty easy to confuse them. Let's go back to this alpha helix. It's a spiral shape that's made up of particular loops. There's this one, and then there's this one, and then this one, and then this one's crushed in there. Made up of several loops. Each loop is made when a red piece interacts with another red piece that's exactly four pieces away from it. 
the result is a spiral structure, but it's a spiral structure that is made up of a bunch of local interactions, interactions between amino acids and other amino acids that are very close to them. Now let's look at this tertiary structure. This safety pin connects two green pieces that are very distant from each other in the chain, and it creates this nice tube shape. But notice that the tube itself couldn't exist if it weren't for local interactions between the yellow and black pieces that create a sheet that could then be rolled up. To summarize all that, the secondary structure is the result of interactions between peptides that are close together, producing a local shape. The tertiary structure is a result of interactions between all of those local shapes, producing a global structure. All right, primary, secondary, tertiary. But there's one more level to go. Quaternary structure. Many proteins are only complete when several peptide chains interact. Check it out. This tube and this spiral can fit inside each other, like this. This here, this jiggling mass of binder clips, possesses quaternary structure, structure that results from the interaction between multiple polypeptide chains. We could keep on adding levels if we wanted to. For example, ribosomes, the organelles that actually make these polypeptide chains, are made up of dozens of different quaternary structures. This is the twisted hierarchy of life. Small pieces combine to make medium pieces, which combine to make larger pieces, whose function is to go back and make those smaller pieces again. It's a strange loop, being alive. Thanks for watching!